right, well, I know we're live, but we're gonna wait just two more minutes for a couple other committee members to join us so that we at least have a forum. We're waiting for Alderman Fate and Pabone. They should be here shortly. need a mic so everyone can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so we have received um, federal funds for the phase one engineering. So that's our first step. And like I said, it was part of our stormwater management plan. We had green elements, planting, stormwater management, all of that. So we're, we're getting there. So what's the next phase or stage now that you've completed this sort well, of phase one? Because it's with uh, federal funds for phase one, we have to advertise SOQs for engineering qualifications, and then we would interview the top three consultants, and then um, award based on the qualifications that we set out in the SOQ, and then put our engineering agreements together, get those approved by the feds, and then we can move forward. And it's also been Awesome. And what's the scope or what's the uh, boundary of the project? Lighting, sidewalks, yes. curves, That's streets.
Well, not the actual decorations, but just being able to. We can put festoon plugs in there, absolutely. Okay. As long as you're not asking me for Christmas decorations. No, not yet. Thank you. I'm taking this one step at a time. Can I get the plug-ins first and then? If you wish for a summary of what I just spewed out, I can put that together in an email if you remind me based on the recent award letters we received. Okay, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. Do we still go after more money? Because we have thus far. That's not near enough. Oh, I know. It's always just a small portion of it. That's kind of like what we did with the depot. We started, we got one, then we got another, then we got another, then we got another, until we had enough money to fund the project. So the expected timelines to even start? Years. 16th Street, two, five? Years. They want us to do construction in 2025. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we've got about five years. The SOQs would be released sooner than that, right? SOQs would be released probably within the next 90 days, right? Okay. For 16th Street, we have to get the phase one approval, and right now it's in the hands of IDOT for review, so we are at their mercy, but we continuously follow up, follow up. You know, I sound like a broken record, but, you know, I keep checking in. IDOT during COVID means IDOT works at about 10% speed of what IDOT typically goes, which is slow as a snail's pace, because the fact that people are retiring and they're not replacing people and they're doing outside consultants and all of this stuff, and with COVID, everybody's working from home, a.k.a. you can't get anything done. Right. I love the fact that the Oak Park Avenue project, where IDOT is repaving from Roosevelt down to 30th. IDOT is holding their own project up because they haven't approved some of their specs and stuff. So they're causing their own delays. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah, so they work from home. They come in the office maybe one day a week, but then our submittals have to all be printed and bound and sent to the main office. Nobody goes to the main office to pick them up. So, anyway, all right. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. We now have at least a quorum. We're still waiting for Alderman Pabon. I'm going to start with open forum. Actually, let me take that back. I'm sorry. I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves. I know that majority of us are well known, but we do have some guest speakers here tonight. So if you all don't mind, we'll do a little quick roll call, and then we'll go into open forum. So Alderman Ruiz, Chair of the Public Works Committee. Bob Fate, Fourth Ward Alderman on the committee. Zach Taylor, Third Ward. Tampa Fate, Executive Director for Oak Park District. Bob Schiller, Public Works Director. Nicole Campbell, Senior Engineer, Public Works. Thank you. So open forum, do we have any public comments from our public regarding any of our agenda items? I know we have one visitor here. I'm not sure if he's here for comment or just to... Okay. All right. So with no public uh, comments, I'm going to close open forum and call the meeting to order at 539. Um, the first agenda item we have is, as you members, as our members may recall, we had Zach Taylor visit us during our last <coughs> meeting in August to discuss a Berwyn Tree Canopy Initiative that he is proposing to the city in collaboration with Beth Gunzel. Um, at that time, since it was... Uh, Presented during open forum, we asked Zach to come back and just speak about his initiative in detail and provide an opportunity for our committee members to be able to ask questions um, and just discuss the initiative. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Zach um, to go ahead and talk about um, his initiative. Sure. So um, Alicia originally asked me to summarize my initiative, and I guess I, I, I thought about that, and I think... My summary is more trees in Berwyn where, where it's appropriate. And um, 
I'm offering to help make that happen, um, in whatever capacity that means. Um, I have some ideas that I've outlined in this letter here. Um, and I was hoping that at this point, um, you guys have had plenty of time to review this document, um, that we could talk about some of the specifics and see where you land on your support and, and whether you're interested in the overall theme of more trees in Berwyn and then some of the specifics here that I've outlined. Um, and we can go through them item by item if you want, if, um, but that's, that's generally where I'm at at this point. Um, is I, wa I wanna hear from you all um, what you're interested in doing. Um, maybe providing a summary about where we're at with trees in Berwyn in general and, and um, kind of like the takeaways from the 2014 um, the tree survey and inventory and, and our planting program. I'd, like, I'd just like to hear more details on that, but I'm hoping that we can just go through item by item and see where we all land on it. Does that sound appropriate at this point? Well, I'm gonna leave that question up to Director Schiller because okay. this really falls under his scope of jurisdiction, the okay. trees and planting and you know, ordering and things like that. But I will just share my experience in, in since being an alderman of the sixth ward uh, for the past four years now. Um, I get a lot of calls from residents who want their tree removed. As soon as their basement floods or as soon as they are experiencing any type of flooding, the immediate culprit is the tree. And they call me and I visit and they want the tree removed. And so I educate them a little bit on, obviously flooding is a multi-tiered problem, right? It doesn't always root from the tree. There's typically different things that, you know, um, induce flooding in homes um, outside of the surrounding area. So this is a, a, there are many times where I call on Director Schiller to, to assist me and visit homeowners to kind of see where the root of the problem is and see how we can help them rectify the issue and sort of take the focus off the tree because it's not always the tree. So that's the pain thinking that I go through as an alderman. Um, so after experiencing this for a couple years, I know we have our proclamation in April for Arbor Day. I know that we go through a series of ordering trees. I know that in my ward specifically, I get more nays than yays <coughs> as far as wanting trees. And I did have a, 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 just a couple handful of residents who were really darn hard, you know, uh, tree huggers and wanted to plant more trees. And I had, um, sort of leaned on them to bring education to the community. How can we educate the community? How can we educate residents? How can we bring more information on the importance of trees and why, we, why they exist, right? And why we need them in the community. Unfortunately, they didn't wanna take that task on. Um, uh, recently, I talked to Director Schiller when we did our last proclamation, like we really need to do an Arbor Day. I would love to have an Arbor Week here. Like, something happening every day leading up to Arbor Day, right? That informs, educates, provides information and gets the community engaged on wanting trees. Because right now to me, I, don't, I can't speak for every alderman, but I know for me, I have less residents that want trees. And so how do I turn that around? How do I, you know, how do I help them get better informed about the importance of trees? Um, I know yeah, that Yeah, I mean, if issues. you're looking for an answer on that, I mean, Think, not really, but, but I, the number, what I'm the looking number for one thing is, is address their concerns, address their concerns, and have a format that they know. Okay. Well, their concerns are they don't want them there. They don't want the maintenance, and that's that's first and foremost. We get we have a. But I, but I guess my my point was, well, how do they like how do they talk to the city? They're calling the alderman. How do they talk to you when they want a tree removed or service? They call all the time. Or I want the tree removed because my gutters are filled with right. leaves. I, I mean, I get, I get I every reason for it. So that it's not over my building. Your building is five feet from the sidewalk, which is three feet from the tree. Sure. That's that's what they call it. It's all the time. I tell probably 500 people a year no to removing their trees. If I, if I cart blanched all of 
not doing it, but if you want to pay to do it, you do it. We probably lose probably 250 to 300 trees a year just because mm -hmm. they just don't like them. So that's kind of the issue. And the other is, like when I walked out, because there was somebody walking around, I wanted to help more people go. But when I came back in, you were talking about you know, residents. And the residents do have a say. I, yeah, I guess my, I, I'm, I, you know, not, none of the, the the things that I've outlined here are really geared towards addressing people's concerns with trees, but more looking for folks that do want trees, mm -hmm. how to facilitate that. So is it in April and October then that the it's planting? Usually, it's usually April and October. I run two sessions as long as I have enough requests for trees. And typically the last five years I've had enough requests that I've done twice a year. There were a few years that I only had maybe 60 requests all year, so I did it once. Because I see the date that you're suggesting, Zach, is September 25th. Um, is there flexibility in that, that maybe we can incorporate that with Arbor Day? Um, and what well, this is a proposal from July that um, yeah. didn't go really, and, and and didn't go anywhere, so. Let me, let me be very. Well, I was just thinking 2022, so that's sure. why I was yeah. let me asking be very that. Frank. Um, this is government, at least in our realm, we're understaffed and overworked. So the ability to devote hours and hours and hours specifically just to this, I get 20 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 15 minutes here. I've got a $15 million utility project going on to be followed up by a $17 million streetscape to follow that up, as well as um, federal mandates on water and... Uh, yes, you're at, capa you're at capacity, and I understand that. So please understand that when but also just just as a resident i'm i work full time i have two young children i volunteer in the community i'm doing i'm doing i'm at capacity as well but i'm still here so mm -hmm. i'm trying to this is important to me i understand that okay i understand that but i'm just saying that, that for me to be able to devote hours and hours and hours to do you know to to meet a timeline it, it's more than likely not going to happen just because of what's going on so and we can work through everything. Sure. We're fine. I, I, I think I've been pretty patient so far. Yeah, well, I'm just, yeah, I, I'm I'm just, just here. <laughs> That's all. Well, you just, in your original, you wanted like 45 days and, and you wanted like result type things. And that that like, would have been great, but a, a, yeah, a, a, a response that says I'm, I'm at capacity would have been appreciated. I didn't get a response. So then I have to keep coming on my time to push it forward. But that's all, I mean, really water under the bridge. I, I'm interested in, like I said, getting more trees in Berwyn, especially for people who want trees or businesses that want trees. One of the things I advocated first off was to say, you know, I, I think that your position is at capacity. A lot of other municipalities have a city forester dedicated to their tree canopy. I want the city to increase the budget to your department so that you have more staff devoted to this really important piece. And part of that is being able to respond to residents who have tree issues, you know, and just saying, okay, like, you're right, this tree is a problem. Or, hey, you know what, this tree is really important to the city. We own the city, or we own this tree. We've invested this many resources. We planted it in 2014. It's now seven years old. It's worth this much to our community. It makes your house, you know, 
a housing value that much higher, all those things that we know the trees do. That's where I'm at. Yeah, and I, I, I'm on board with all of that. Okay. Where I step off the bandwagon is as soon as someone says, we want you to plant trees in front of people's house whether they like it or not. Yeah, and I'm not interested in that either. I'm not, I'm not pursuing that. What I'm interested in is making it super easy to facilitate a request. Like, I know there's a link on the website, but going and tabling and saying, request a tree, or you know, even if it's a volunteer who's part of our initiative to say, like, you know, they go to um, Oktoberfest or whatever the city event is, and say, sign up for a tree here that we could pass on to you and say, this person on 34th Street wants a tree um, at, at this address. You know, is that an appropriate spot? Like the, I, I just want that facil facilitating that piece to be easier. Now, some kind of a group that wants to do that type of stuff, I'm 100% on board with this. If there's an uh, you know, educational advocacy group that wants to partake in that, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. But as far as you know, the planting of trees, I think overall, I'm glad that you have a program. I think there are some things that could be added to it to make it more robust. You know, like being able to go to the city website and say, this is the type of tree I want and selecting it right I there. I will not do that either just because of the fact I don't know what's going to come out of the nurseries each year as far as, because I, I seek out the nurseries and I go, tell me what's, what's hardy this year, tell me what's, what's been growing really well with this growth season that we've had. What do you have? <coughs> Sure. Sometimes, you know, I'll get a swamp oak, other times I'm going to get a linden, other times I'm, and I'll offer, and I'll bring in three or four different varieties, but the minute you give, you give up the control to the resident, it becomes one of those things where I want this, I want that, it's not big enough, it's not this, the canopy's not right, I've had this, I've had somebody plant a tree and they, they didn't think it was, it had a big enough canopy for what it should and had it told, told me they want it out. I don't want it, take it out. Bob, I have a question in regards to that. <coughs> Do, am I correct in, in my memory that typically you work with about three or four types of trees in general? I, I don't think you have like a wide variety of trees I, that I you have, plant. I have pages that I can go through and use. Um, but that you plant annually. A or annually, I'll, I'll usually have three or four different species <coughs> that I do at each different planting. Um, I've gotten away from maples for years because this city is so inundated with maples, it's crazy. If we ever have some kind of a maple disease infestation, we're going to get cleaned out bad. So does that change? Does that those, those four typically change every year depending on the nurseries? Some of them. Okay. I mean, sometimes it'll be a repeat. Um, you know, lindens are typically a, a, a pretty hardy tree overall, and they grow in a lot of diverse different growing conditions, growing cycles. So, you know, there are a lot of times on the list, um, but, you know, like I said, sometimes it's,
don't do it. We don't do any of that. We didn't. So, uh, okay. Bob, do you have any questions? No, I, I, no I don't have any, any questions. Um, I, I've just had a handful of residents ask for trees. Um, most ask for them to be removed, as you have said causing sewer issues or problems flooding their basement they're always accusing the tree of doing that but um i don't get that many requests i think i put in two this fall for bob but um yeah we, we should go to a different more variety of trees and get away from those maples because we're going to be wiped out here like we did with the ash trees so um and then uh, i remember years ago when i got in office i thought of a program like a share a tree program where residents pay a portion maybe we could plant more trees but I think you talk, t talk me out of that because, uh, you know, then there's kind of a liability and stuff that if it dies, the people want, you know, do you recall that or no? Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that wasn't a good idea to share a tree program, you know, to try to get more, I was trying to get more trees planted when the ash were dying, you know, and, but um, like you said, most people don't request a tree, you know, and we can go ask them, you know, and, and try to, and promote this a little bit, uh, you know, Zach, and, um, you know, like you said, at, at sites or events and stuff, and uh, we can try to promote it on the the um, city website a little bit more and Facebook pages possibly. And um, but uh, yeah, not, the fall now, this late fall is the best time to plant, not September. They're in the conference you know, room. Yes. You know, it's the door that's I'm in the, the right do, I'm in the landscape room. business myself, and um, yeah, now this time, like now towards Halloween, is the best time to plant trees. The leaves are falling off. It's you know, it's you know. They'll survive a lot better. Put them in the ground at this time and then water the bejesus out of them. And then yeah. But, yeah, you know, I, I agree with a lot of your stuff here, and we could uh, try to work together on a little few things here, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm bored. I, right? I'm trying to expand and get... Uh, I'd love to see more trees, 100%. So... Well, Sounds and, good. You know, and it's not to put you on, on the spot, Zach, but it, uh, it's just a concern that I have from my experience. So I have been, again, approached by many residents with great ideas. You know, let's do this, let's do that, I'll volunteer, I'll help, and then somewhere through the process they drop off and then I'm left holding the ball because it's an initiative that's already been started, has been announced, has been broadcasted, and so it's, it's expected. So I, I know you've been coming um, and you just shared, you know, your workload and your responsibilities. How do you foresee this happening with resident engagement or the education part and attending different events to, you know, share information and inform residents? So is it going to be solely you or is there a group of you or, you know, Yeah, I mean, the there's, a, there's a group of us, in? yeah. Um, and we're, we're still starting to, at the very beginning of our meetings. I, it, this will not work if it's just me. Um, but I expect that I will have a lot of people carrying this torch with me. Um, I've been approached by a lot of residents already asking to be part of this, so okay. we're we're starting that now. Um, and you know, we've also been exploring programs with the Morton Arboretum and meeting with them um, to talk about different ways that they can become involved in Berwyn. They've had 
they've mentioned that they have Berwyn uh, like on their, um, I don't know, target list of communities that they want to support. So we're starting to have that um, connection. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, I expect to meet myself personally to be one small part of what this looks like in the long run. Um, I, I hope that I don't have to come to all these meetings, but I will <laughs> if I have to. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you want to say no, something? No, okay. just that sounds good and maybe this is something we need to work on over the winter <laughs> here now and be ready for springtime. Right. Obviously, that's why I wanted to have this meeting before the, you know. the cold sets in. Because um, there's also, good ideas here, and if he gets a little group together, you know, and uh, right now it's you and Beth? Uh, yeah, it's... Beth's moving, so... Oh, and Beth's moving, okay. Yeah, Beth's moving, um, but she's still going to be involved with the Chicago Region Trees Initiative and, and the Morton Arboretum. Um, so she's willing to step up and help out? And she's, she said she's going to be continue to okay. be part of this and okay. has committed to that. All right, that's good. Um, and then I have several other residents who are on my list, and, um, and we're, you know, we'll be meeting with them, too. So. Okay, great. Uh, so but there's a there's a lot of specifics here that we haven't I mean I know you have a big agenda but that we haven't gotten to and I think that I would like to go through some of the specifics um, I can con we can continue on but you know if it's suited for a, a different smaller meeting that's fine if it's Bob and I or Nicole Bob and I, I what, whatever makes sense um, but it you know it's really hard to come away with like action items in a, in a setting like this you know but we can try I, I appreciate you willing to, being willing to weigh in on what, what you're thinking on some of them um, but there are th things in here like um, creating incentives for the parkway planting uh, recognition by city council for residents that have planted a tree this year kind of cel celebrating trees culturally in Berwyn in a way that we're not yet um, can, I, can I just stop you for a second? Bob, sure. how do you, because this is really your area, your trees, how, how do you foresee this collaboration coming together? You know, he just obviously made a suggestion, Zach just made a suggestion that, you know, is this a smaller meeting between Public Works and the group? Is, do you want someone like, I don't mind taking the lead and being sort of the liaison between the two and continue to meet with them? Because I'm, I'm really, excited about this initiative. It, it needs to stay in this environment because ultimately okay. there's going to be costs associated with it. There's okay. going to be whether it be personnel as far as hiring or dedicated dollars as far as consultants as far as whatever associated with it. I'd rather have um, you guys the public to, works committee. You can, you can kind of be the sounding Yeah, that's fine with me. I, I mean, we can keep going in, in, in here. I just want to be respectful of your time, and I've already taken 20 minutes. So, so. Um, before you start, what I'd like to do is just have um, Sandy Fate share her ideas of Arbor Day for next year, because it, it sort of it, it covers a lot of the bases of what I was thinking and have shared with Director Schiller. And so it looks like we have quite a few different groups thinking about the same thing with just a, you know, a variety of ideas so that we can um, um, sort of share all of our ideas and see how there's a way to partner and bring those together. So Sandy, do you mind just kind no. of sharing what you've been um, thank you. thinking about for Arbor Day? <coughs> Bob, and I, I apologize, I got a clock here. Bob and I have had um, several discussions of how we can make Arbor Day work. Um, I actually wanted to see if we could do like an Arbor Day week and my personal incentive was um, <clears throat> twofold. We, as a park district, we need to do two things. We are have just taken on a grant from the Morton Arboretum where we have a plant, a tree management program. And as part of that, that's helping us understand what's in our parks, but then it's planting trees and moving forward so that there's always a level of trees that you always have. You have your canopy, then your understory. There's always something growing to fill in that in the event that we do lose some of our bigger, more mature trees, there's other things to fill the space. So we're putting together that full plan. And then secondly, we received Arboretum status for Proxa Park last year. 
So unfortunately, it was during COVID, so there's not a whole lot of fanfare, but as having that status, we also need to do a lot of public education as well. So we're looking at our programs for 2022 to see where can we best fit all this. So Bob and I started talking like, can we collaborate on something? Um, and then we talked about what about doing some programs with the school? So can we do programs for our public, our general residents? Can we start getting our kids involved? And we've done everything from possibility of a tree planting, a tree in every school in the district, but we haven't finalized that. Our discussions won't come to become more solid until around January when we all have a little bit more time on our hands. Uh, but I think a lot of what Zach has in his proposal, we can help cover a lot of that with the education. I think that um, if Zach and I um, spend some time together, I think we can put together a full program of how we can get this and get our residents engaged, do a lot of programming. Uh, we wanna just do start out with tree walks. We wanna start doing programs of just learning. There's a lot to offer our residents. And we were looking at doing a tree week with uh, primarily Bob has offered to plant up 50 trees um, throughout the community where I think that between the city's marketing, our marketing team, um, I've got a note to reach out to Joe Velez and the school district 98 and we will get the North Berwyn involved as well. So it is a citywide effort that we are all working to make Arbor Week um, active and on everybody's mind and not just an Earth Day. So most of the schools want to do Earth Day programs, but we want to make it bigger and celebrate trees as part of Berwyn's heritage. So we've got a number of things in the works, but nothing's kind of finalized yet because we just started conversations about a month and a half ago. Okay, all right, great. So I just wanted um, <coughs> Sandy to be able to share that because I feel like we're all kind of saying the same, having the same language and giving off the same message. And it'd be great if we could just kind of rein all that um, collaboration in together and sort of see how we can all help each other to make this happen because if we've got volunteers and you need volunteers and she's got the marketing and you need marketing and we've got public works it just so like everyone's role is very nicely fitting together the puzzles coming together yeah i mean i definitely think in terms of the big theme of getting more trees in here we're completely in line i think there's some specific parts of my proposal that won't be addressed by an arbor week but Will, I, will our group support Arbor Week and Sandy's work? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Do you want to spend like another five minutes just kind of going over some of the things that you you feel like <coughs> need to be? Okay. Um, so, I don't know. I am told now that we used to have a like a citizens commission for um, for tree like for trees here in Berwyn. I don't. Okay. Um, but it, there was some sort there of was committee. Some, some kind of a, and still kind of quasi is. Okay. But you know, it, it's all employee based, so it's one of those things that you know talk about things very informally and things like that. But um, that's not out of the realm of possibility to do something like that as an advisory committee. Sure. I mean, that, that's, I, I'd be looking to reactivate it or activate it um, and put one or two volunteers from our group into that advisory capacity um, and support initiatives like Arbor Day or um, if you're like, hey, there's a resident who's upset about their pear tree, can, can you give us a volunteer to go pick up the pears? You know, maybe we could do something like that. So I, I, don't, I don't know what those types of partnerships would look like, but could explore it. Um, but one of the, you know, one of the things that I've hit on a couple times, and I know that you guys have gotten a lot of feedback on, is the the tree contracts in Berwyn. Um, and I think the way, and you might know better, I think the way that Oak Park runs it is that they have a citizens commission that looks at their tree contracts, and they don't have a low bid requirement, so they can select whoever the contractor is that is best suited for it, and then their citizens commission reviews those contracts before they go um, and and kind of sign the deal on them. So I'm just curious, do you have experience with that? Do you know what? No, we do. We follow lowest qualified bid. Yeah. That's the way we go through and do things. And <clears throat> a lot of the things, a lot of the, the, the reasons that we're getting, we get the pushback and you get the negativity about
all those. Because the fact that I have, not only do I have to maintain trees, I have to maintain trees in an urban environment with street lights and plow trucks and traffic and street sweepers and all of that. I've got to have the canopies up high enough um, that we prohibit uh, damage to our equipment. Yeah, and the, but they're also the low bidders, so. Yeah, I guess I guess what I'm asking for. I mean, I appreciate everything you're saying, and I feel like we're a little bit in the weeds on that. I guess what I'm asking for is just a mechanism for participation. Like, here are the trees that are scheduled to be pruned for the year. Here's where the contract is being let. Um, Citizens Commission, what is your input on this? You know, having that conversation as as a way to participate in caring for community trees. I know you don't have this person in place now or the budget, but it, would a full-time arborist give you that? thing I have is just a, a follow-up analysis and update to 2014 uh, the, the ur urban forestry management plan um, and I, I would like to see some kind of report each year or like every few years it says here's the changes in our tree canopy here's what we installed this year celebrating the fact that Bob you got 25 trees in the spring and 25 trees in the fall you know it, you know the impacts that our city dollars are having, um, our residents' tax dollars are having on the tree canopy and what we're doing with those funds. Um, and, you know, 2014, like, we, you know, having a plan isn't very good if we just leave that 2014 plan on the shelf. I'd like to see updates to that inventory and messaging around. To your tree. Or to our, uh, canopy. Yeah. Well, then, when you need a letter of support, you know, we'll we'll have a citizens group ready. And if we had a citizens committee, I think that would probably speak to grant funders. Yeah. You know, so, a lot of details here. Yeah. Thank you for all the time that you've been giving me. Um, information to unpack here, Zach. I know that you attended Alderman Pabone's. Um, town hall or community meeting I did, and presented yeah. to the residents there how how was that received what type of questions I mean it's it's kind of like what you you guys are describing you know when first you start talking about trees people are like I hate my tree um, I've been asking the city to get rid of it um, but but 
those were the most vocal people, but then I, we had, I think, 10 people sign up um, to uh, participate in this group from oh, that meeting. Okay. So there is a level of interest there. Um, I, think, <coughs> I think there's some confusion on how to participate mm -hmm. or how to, um, folks don't understand who to talk to um, when they have a treat issue. Um, and they, they don't understand who to talk to when they want a tree. And I know that Bob has said it's, there's a link on the website, but even, you know, I've been exploring this and I, I, I didn't know that I had to reach out to Bob. I found out on a Facebook page that somebody else had talked to Bob. So then when I wanted a tree in my yard, I emailed Bob directly. So those are the, you know, the types of things I want to make sure that it's like super clear Sweet. Our website is, in many cases, very difficult to find things in. So that's we're, we're in the process of working on that. I'm going to guess it's probably going to be uh, probably six months or so, and we'll have a completely new website with that part of it, the construction part. It's just it's just very difficult to find things in there. Mm -hmm. That's the city's website. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if you don't have any more questions, I I, I don't. Say that we um, what what do you want the next step to be, Bob? I mean, we obviously have to form some sort of group, Sandy, in regards to Arbor Day, right? Should we? I'd love to be part of that, by the way. So if you decide to, you know, have a committee, and I don't know if Zach wants to be part of that mm -hmm. as well, but I would love to be part of that. Great. To Thank see you. how you know we can roll that out for next year. Um, Bob, any, any final comments? Bob, Fate, any? No, I mean, we can meet in this environment, like Bob said, right? Correct? We don't have to, we can meet like we are for this uh, yeah. planning stages and we work our way through it. Work our way through it. We've got, you know, six months here, so. conversation still with our um, um, the organization was it the Arboretum, the Arboretum, Arboretum and then you've got to go back sure. to your group now and talk about what you know kind of sort well, of exactly, you know, what we shared here the, today well, with you. The group, you know, yeah. What kind of size are you talking with the group? Because like you know the Alderman was saying we get a lot of times where people volunteer to do things and everybody's gone home and then as you get going it just kind of peels off Sure, and, and I guess I'm looking for the city also to have that, you know, if we're going to put all of our effort in, I want that matched with a, a city <coughs> staff city representative. Staff is going to be the planting, the maintenance, the things like that, as far as, um, you know, at the, at the ward meetings, the city attends those. I attend, you know, many of those in a year. Yeah. Um, but as far as festivals, events, things like that, that's where I'm going to be looking for the supplemental. 
Yeah, I guess I was specifically saying with the city forester and exploring, adding to. Well, we can talk yeah. about that. Yeah. That's you know, again, government deals with government move very slowly. Uh, yep. I have budget meetings and I'll be I'll bring it up as an option. Okay. And um, it's one of those things that may not happen this year, it may not happen next year, but it's one of those things. Once it starts, we'll have it in the uh, in queue and go through and see if that's something that we decide we want to do. Yeah. And my and my takeaway from this meeting is I'm going to coordinate with. Now, Sandy on her Arbor Day plan, see if our group can incorporate in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to meet with our group again and continue talks with the Arboretum. You know, if there's momentum to do tree planting around Arbor Day and that, uh, you know, there's a second document that I handed out, that's if we want that document to be, you know, morphed into the Arbor Week, I, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, okay. that, that, that all sounds fine. Okay. Um, so, I think it's a great start. Yeah. I think we have to start somewhere, and I think since it, we already proclamated, let's put some teeth to that, let's put some recognition and some work behind it, and start getting the flow of excitement of it. Because right now, as just two aldermen shared, there is no excitement about trees, and you've kind of experienced that too. I would also strongly Well, there is, I mean, I'm here. Well, my I groups mean, are out. There's some. The, 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 no, the no mind, not there's a, the mind, there's a yeah. minority of excitement right now. Yeah, but and I would strongly. I think that's the biggest disconnect right now Your in need. I think that as Zach and I collaborate moving forward, I think a lot of what he's looking for as initiative is something that we could easily do in the parks because they're all very similar to what I want to be doing in the next year to, or a couple years. Great. I think a lot of these can kind of blend together and I mean, obviously you're taking bigger steps here than what we can do at, at the park as a whole, but I, I can truly see this being a great collaboration. We can get North Berwyn involved and just getting our, putting our heads together, making it work. But I think the public um, and educational components we can easily handle in the park. And Zach, I would, I, would, I would like to recommend to you that you reach out to every alderman and see where there's an opportunity for you to present at their town hall meetings to talk about your interest and you know kind of start the conversations going and getting individuals feedback and input and you know stirring up the conversations in the community to see where one, you could probably gain more um, manpower yep. and to just starting to get the word out like you know we're going to start doing this you know getting people comfortable with the idea yeah okay <coughs> i'd love to have you at my next one okay send me the date and Bob will i will certainly do that happy to present so. yeah. all right well any all more right, thank questions you. or conversations about this <coughs> none all right well thank you zach you're right, welcome thanks. to stay or or leave but thank you for your time we appreciate your patience with you know how government moves slowly but i'm glad that you were able to make it tonight all right so moving on we've we've already kind of hit two uh agenda items the Berwyn tree canopy and arbor day um sandy as i mentioned i'd love to be part of that committee and conversation so please let me know how i can participate um, and then we're going to move on to item number five which is our ver our veteran vehicle sticker fee I know that we have a veteran here that just kind of wants to share some public comment. I know I'm going out of uh, protocol here, but I'm going to allow our, our uh, guest here to go ahead and share his comments or questions that he has about this agenda item. Sir, if you don't mind stepping up to the poll and just letting us your, know your name. Is the mic on? Or? Yeah. Oh, I, I think I turned it on. Let me turn. I speak loud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't need it. <laughs> Oh, it is on. You're, you're just fine. Good. Go ahead. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks. Thank you, Sandy. A little bit about me first. I'm Michael E. Parks. I'm an ex-Chicago police officer, and I'm a Vietnam-era veteran. And about two years ago, I was the victim of a home invasion. And that rendered me crippled and caused me to get some embolisms in my lungs and it tore my left leg and had to rebuild it. But I'm permanently crippled now. But aside from that, the Veteran City sticker, when I first heard about it, I said, that's a very good idea. And I don't think no, no veteran is going to really show up to let the council know that this is one of the best ideas you came up with in a long time because Berlin has, as far as I can remember, has done not that much for veterans. And this is something that's going to, for veterans at least, and we are outspoken people, like everyone on my block knows me, because I sit on the block and I talk to everyone. I'm in this man's favor. <laughs> I like this man. When he went for re-election, I was there. <laughs> Everybody come down the block.
bit of something, something, something to make it where we believe we did a good job and that we can take it from that point and then we can proceed in the future as knowing that our government got our back. We did something. We can proceed as, as great citizens as opposed to some veterans come back and get disgruntled. They're not doing nothing for us. So why should I obey rules? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? I'm, I'm inclined to believe that if they come here, make their voices known, say things, they are, they, it will turn out in the best interest for all veterans. And I'm not here just for me. All the veterans, I have three block veterans that live on my block. I talk with them. I want to know what they, they don't have the time to come up because they're working like I'm working up. I'm a software engineer now. So what he's talking about, y'all need a new web page. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the support. <laughs> that is what I do for a publishing company. I, I do their homepage, their e-commerce site. And I will say that, yeah, it needs some improvement to make it easier. Yeah. Maneuverability for for average Joe Blow. Average Joe Blow, when they get on the website, they don't want to have to try to figure things out. It should be right there in front of them. Bum, bum. Uh, so basically, I just want to extend my, my support from the most of the veterans that I know that we are all in favor of this and hope that it doesn't get pushed off the agenda. We want it to stay on the agenda. But if budget just not there, oh well. We not the first time you heard that line, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And with that, that's it. Well, I want to thank you for coming here. I really appreciate your input. Um, I'm really glad that you came here to speak on this particular topic. Unfortunately, we're not even going to be able to discuss it today because the young lady who spearheads our um, vehicle sticker um, department was not able to come here with some data that we needed in order uh. to continue the discussions. Um, but I'm not letting it fall to the waistline. We will have another meeting and we will talk will, about it will again. It be on the agenda? When they, when she, next time. Yeah, so if you can come again and if you want to bring friends, more uh, friends, or if you want to bring a letter, you can always bring a letter signed by multiple individuals okay. sharing their interests or if they want to write their own individual letter just to share, you know, their own personal opinion about the matter and, and um, that would be wonderful to know. Um, I'm really glad that you're here. Okay. Thank you I'll for your time. I'll you about it, okay, on the next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. No problem. And thank you for serving our country. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I just want to watch. <laughs> You're more than welcome to watch. Um, so as I just shared, um, we unfortunately are not going to be able to talk about the next two items. Uh, Jeanette from um, what is that department? Collections Department Collections, is yes. not able to join us with some data that she was going to provide to us in regards to parking fee schedules where we currently are. Um, the different categories that we have and how to potentially improve that. The creator of the, of the program can speak uh, in volumes about what it is right now. Oh, if she'd like to, or if she'd like to save <laughs> her comments and opinions for the next meeting, I'll leave that up to her. Which there are several neighboring communities yeah. that do that. Oak Park has a system where they allow pods, areas where you park overnight, and it's like that you pay for. It's like three to five hundred dollars a year yeah. to right. be able to park on the street. I think it's a lot more than that, Bob. And Forest Park is the same. And you don't get to choose where you'd like to park. You get you get you get told. You get told.
toll free. This is where you park. And there's no off street parking whatsoever. So, I mean, on street parking, I apologize. Aside on street parking. From being that As you know, I was the, the solicitor of the increase, so reducing it is not really something I'm in favor of, but we have a whole committee here to make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do know we have a parking issue. I, I don't know what the concern is as far as parking fee schedules. I uh, feel that we should be doing an overhaul on our parking fee schedule because I, I know that there's many of them that have not been increased or have not been looked into to see if we're at capacity or you know if we're over capacity and you know how we should be increasing those fees to continue to maintain the labor that we pour into to manage these different parking um, options that we have um, right and so the just the maintenance and the labor alone I, I don't think that we even um, cover it with what we charge for you know the basin fairway or for the garage or for parking on by the metro I, I uh, super zones we don't charge at all um, passes guest passes are five dollars for 20 or 10 or something I mean they're very nominal fees so I mean to me that's the, the where I would like to gear the discussion when we talk about parking fee schedules I wasn't, I, I'm not aware of what the real concern is in, okay. of the individuals that actually deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, so I, I can't talk on that part. Well, it, it, I mean, over the course of it's gonna be 15 years, okay, we have made great steps. You know, there's so many, like uh, the super zone stickers were a separate thing. It wasn't connected to the vehicle stickers, but some people would sell those or give those away. So we combined. So, I mean, Bob, do you have any additional comments no. you'd like to share on no. any of this? I know that I've been here my whole life. I've seen the changes that have occurred, and she's correct. A lot of progress has been made, but it's a lot of people know the ins and outs and try to get around things. So I'm with you on you know, looking at these uh, super zones, looking at these fees, maybe those parking books, you know, for, you know, 
not that we've got to make money on them, but if we're breaking even, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, we got people standing there selling them, having the, you know, staff time that has to do these, storage, everything, in a mail, you know. And, um, you know, even if it was 10 bucks, you know, 8 bucks, I, you know, I don't, there'd be no complaints on that, but what do I know? So I'd like to just go ahead but, and make a, a, just have these two agenda items yeah, move forward. Let's carry it over. For, uh, our next right. meeting for additional conversation. Yeah, and we'll talk about the veteran stickers again. Yep, okay. and then hopefully we'll have some data for the, actually three yeah. items, I'm sorry. So to, Three items we'll no, carry over. Veterans and the veteran Veterans and parking fee, fee and schedule and super block. Okay. We'll hold, hold another meeting and we'll have those roll over into the next meeting. Sounds good. All right. Well, the parking fee schedules includes right, the passes, so right? Do you want to? Right. We'll talk about the parking passes too. Yeah, that's all encompassed. We'll talk about all of the parking. Okay. That we have. Okay. Right. All the way down to the right. sticker. Okay. Sounds so we'll, good. So we'll rely on you to kind of break that down for us on what we're talking about when we talk about the parking. Which is not spelled out, specifically spelled out, is it? It just says retired, I it's, believe, which is, it's is very vague. Okay. I'll have to what revisit it. 